We're going to try something new today, so thanks for joining me uh, online, live. Um, and uh, what I want to do is I am asking you to share with me uh, a passage of Scripture, uh, maybe a, a biblical reference or something along that line, that uh, has been impactful. And with that, just a, a brief description, a sentence or two, of how God is challenging you, how God's working in your life, um, and how He's teaching you um, through this time and, and through this particular, uh, through this season of life where we're at. I, as you guys know, I've been in the text and sharing and doing all that stuff uh, quite a bit in my own heart and what God's been doing in my own life. Um, you know, trying to be honest with you and, and just sharing the, the, the struggles and the, and the real wrestles that I've had um, with all of those things. Um, and so anyway, that's what I want to do today. So it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I'm not sure how it'll work, but I thought, why not give this a shot and let's see what happens. So um, it would be kind of funny today if, if this was one of those days where actually nobody was available and um, and everybody was busy doing something else and I'm on here by myself and nothing happened. So we'll see if that happens. Um, hopefully it does not. Good morning, Randy. Good to see you. Hey, would you, um, as you start jumping in here, uh, I just want to remind everybody, please share this uh, as soon as you get on. If, if it's something that's important or that you, that you have found to be encouraging, please share it with other people um, so that we can encourage others uh, and, and more people as we go forward. Um, I wanted to, to share with you one of the things that I really loved um, this week um, was Second Samuel um, uh, from the sermon on Sunday. It was the passage in Second Samuel where David... Uh, is is getting the promise from Nathan, Second um, Samuel chapter seven, I believe it was, um, as starting in verse twelve. When your days are fulfilled, uh, yeah, it's Second uh, Samuel verse uh, seven, verse twelve. When your days are fulfilled, um, and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your uh, offspring after you, who shall come from your body. And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Um, and then in that, and then it says, and when he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with a rod of men, with the stripes of uh, of the son of men. But my steadfast love will never depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from you. And he continues on about the beauty of the kingdom and how incredible it is. And the thing that grabbed my heart in that is that God, knowing what was coming, and knowing the promises. Uh, the 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 failures of David it promises him an eternal kingdom because of his heart and it was just encouraging me for me to know that God is working in the midst of our brokenness and that's what was encouraging um, as I was reading that text this last week um, on Sunday morning so please take a second give me one of the passages that God's working in your heart and in a brief explanation and I will read that passage um, and share that with everyone else that's joining us this morning. Um, so as you get a chance, uh, just pop that, whatever Bible verse it is that God's been working in your heart on um, this week, and let's share that with one another. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you guys. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, like I said, trying to do something a little bit different today. Um, and so uh, if you would share with me uh, a passage that God's been using in your heart this last week, and um, that we can share, I can share with uh, with the rest of us here on Facebook. Um, I that would be awesome, and I'd love to hear from you what God's doing. Trying to do an interactive thing today, um, if that makes any sense. And I've I've actually never done this before. So part of it's just trying to figure out how this works and and if we can make it happen or not. So, somebody shoot me a note. Let me know. Let me know what you're thinking here. Um, what has God been teaching you through the text um, over the last week? Or weeks as we as we have gone um, through this process. Something? Anybody? Anything at all? Wouldn't that be crazy um, if that doesn't happen? I'll have to uh, I'll have to do I'll have to maybe <clears throat> pull out my Bible and read another text for you guys. So. Um, what a great idea I had today. Uh, isn't this awesome? You know, there are times where you have thoughts and processes and you put them out there and, and then it, it, it just doesn't actually work. So, um, let me just see. I'm grabbing my other Bible here. 
because I actually have two of them. One is a little handier, a little easier to, to, to pick up and move. Any scripture, any anything that God's been encourage you in, encouraging you in, um, uh, challenging you, convictions, anything like that. This this is this is the time I want to try and do an interactive sharing time today. So please share that passage with me um, as you can. Proverbs, oh Kathleen, Proverbs three five and six. Here we go. So what what is it that really grabbed your heart in that text? Uh, it's one that's one of my favorites, um, absolutely one of my favorites. I, and I I'm always convicted by that text, uh, probably because of my own tendency to trust in my own thoughts and my own my own process. So um, or my own my own ability to understand what's happening. But yeah, Proverbs three five and six. Let me read that for us right right here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Um, I love that. And actually that was one of the cool passages. Uh, th- this idea of trusting in the Lord. And what's I grabbed um when we did, we actually looked at that. I don't remember when it was, but here recently. Um, and verses 7 and 8 I thought was incredible too in that in that same passage, Proverbs 3, uh, 7 and 8. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. And just how encouraging that idea, that, that reality of when we don't lean on our own wisdom, when we're trusting in the Lord, there's actually there's physical refreshment that comes because just because of how it impacts our lives and how, how it changes how we see um, what's going on. So thank you, Kathleen. Somebody else, give me a passage, something that God's been encouraging you in, something that God's been challenging you in. Maybe it's a conviction. Maybe, maybe um, like myself, you've been reading passages and being being convicted by that reality. Susan, thank you, Susan. Uh, John chapter 14, verses 16 through 18. I'm turning there right now. Uh, let's see, another helper. He is with us always. That, that is awesome. John 14, verses 16 through 18. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and within you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. What a great encouragement that Jesus did not leave us alone, right? And that he sends a helper. And even in that conviction, remember too, I love this, that he actually, Jesus says the world won't know him. They're, they're already deceived and, and they're not going to know him because he, they don't know him and, and, and they're deceived by this and they don't have uh, the access. They don't have um, the, the, the knowledge of him or the influence of him to change their hearts and to interpret scripture. So uh, it's a it's it's a pretty important thing to know they don't they don't have the spirit of truth and so to see the world doing things that aren't that don't line up with scripture probably shouldn't shock us it, 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 may, it may disappoint us but it probably shouldn't shock us all that much somebody else another passage that god has just encouraged you convicted you or, or maybe it's just a challenge maybe he's comforted you um Maybe he has uh, uh, encouraged or, or, or given you boldness because of who he is in, in the text um, this last week or two weeks ago or whatever, you know, in, over this last month. Um, I, I, think the, I think the heart for me in this is that I, I am one person who's dealing with life in my own ways, reading scripture and, and wrestling with this stuff. But I believe that God has given us a body of believers and each one of us is an important piece of that body and brings an important aspect of, of truth and hope and, and perspective that is helpful for me at times to hear from you what God's doing, to know, to know that, that you are being challenged by the Word of God, that you are um, living and, and, and exercising this truth and then sharpening me. Um, so this is uh, maybe maybe this is for you to help me today um, and encourage me and to, to sharpen me um, as you share passages of scripture. So somebody else share with me something that God has been challenging or encouraging you with this week um, through the text and and uh, through our time in the words to, in the word together. That would be that would be awesome. Um, I have really enjoyed James. Have you guys been enjoying James on Wednesday? Um, what a what a neat time. What a challenging time that was, man. To talk about our tongue, Ugh, who wants to talk about dealing with their tongue? That that is that's not all that that not all that great. This Wednesday, I'm actually pretty encouraged about this Wednesday. 
um, because it's uh, well, it's it's another, I think, a difficult passage, but a good passage um, that will really be uh, it will just be awesome for us as a church to wrestle with and to, and to put our our hearts around. But it's the the idea of, of wisdom from God and and how it changes our lives and how the, the fruit of that, the outcome of that, um, and, and what that's going to produce in us. Um, James chapter 3, verse 17, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Um, man, what a what a great opportunity and a challenge for us to wrestle with this week. What does that look like in our lives if we are being led by the wisdom from above, the wisdom from God, not the wisdom of man or the wisdom of this world? So um, I'm excited about wrestling with that and and really applying that to our lives to say, okay, God, so how do we deal with this? How does this how does this impact and, and transform our hearts this week? So somebody else, you, you guys have got to have a, another passage of scripture, something else that has really grabbed your heart. Um, that you would want to share with with our Facebook family, with our church family um, here with me. Please do that. I'm just trying to, again, as interactive as possible. So um, I, I hope that in the midst of all this stuff, you guys, uh, you are encouraged and um, you're finding time to really wrestle with the Lord on how do you deal with this life thing. If you're like me, then you have an opinion about um, Governor Inslee, you have an opinion about COVID, you have an opinion about about our response to that. Um, you have a you have an opinion about political issues, uh, regardless of what side you're on. And you'll notice that I'm I'm, I'm really doing my best to to not um, to not draw a line in the sand, or, or even at times to share with you really where I'm at. But I, I want you to know why. Um, the number one reason for that is that I want every chance for the gospel to be effective. I want every opportunity to share the gospel with my neighbors, regardless of whether they are, are very uh, um, liberal in their mindset or they're very conservative in their mindset, whether they uh, are terrified of, of this virus or not, um, whether they believe that, that you know the governor is doing a great job or not. Uh, I want... I want the gospel to have every opportunity for effect. So my goal, my purpose is in not sharing um, my political views or my, my personal views about some of the stuff that's happening in here um, in, in this time is really about presenting the gospel. It's about, um, ultimately in my heart, it's about the opportunity um, for there to be a gospel impact um, and that if at all possible, somebody um, might know the Lord, that there might be an opportunity for the gospel that 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 I couldn't have done otherwise, that, that maybe would have been shut down had, um, you know, had we not had, or had I shared my opinion about um, this, pers- the, you know, the, the particular stuff that's going on um, at this time. So, um, and that's one of the passages that I, that I really love about Paul um, when he's writing some of this uh, some of his encouragements to the church, right, um, is the, I think it's 1 Corinthians. Um, let me go around over here and check. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verses 19 through 23. He says this, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jew I became a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as an outsider to the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessing. Now, I don't believe that Paul in any way compromised his faith or what he believed in Christ or his obligation to follow Jesus and, and, and uh, to live by the convictions that he had. But it appears that he would engage with them where they're at with the goal of per- creating an opportunity for the gospel. And so um, one of the great convictions that I have had and, and our elders have done the same thing is to say this is about this is about more than just um, a political view. This is about more than just uh, even even an American um, uh, freedom view and, and, 
And you, you need to know that, that those, I, I, I personally wrestle with that balance of, of honoring the government and, and uh, protecting the, 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 the um, amazing freedoms and the, the laws, the, the Constitution and the, the, the legal setup that we have here in this country. I think it's, I think it's great and it's something that, that we do need to protect. Um, and so I wrestle with how do we balance all of that out on a regular basis. But ultimately, the gospel and the eternal destination of people in this, uh, in in our current time, is is what I think is the, the paramount, the most important thing. And and I think Paul in First Corinthians nine really wrestles with that to say this is about the gospel, and, and I surrender my rights, my freedoms, my my personal agendas, my my stuff, the stuff that's about me personally. Um, I'm surrendering that for the sake of the gospel, and so that's been my conviction. That's, and I believe that's um, been our elders, the elders' conviction of the church is to really to say we want to be about the gospel first. So um, that's that's the reason that that we're doing what we're doing. That's the reason we've done what we've done up to this point as a church, as far as um, gathering and 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 the things that we're doing there. So. Um, what else? Somebody else, give me another passage. Something that God has been encouraging you in. A passage that 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 you have been that you have read, or maybe it was something that that came out of the sermon this last week, or come from, came from Wednesday in our time in James. Somebody share with me something that God just encouraged you with and really challenged your heart with. And uh, yeah, I think it would be good for us to share that with one another. So. Um, and maybe be thinking about that for our next time that we gather. Uh, it would this would be fun if, if we could do a little bit more interaction. Um, I still haven't figured out how to get you guys to where I can actually. I, I know there's a way I'm supposed to be able to um, jump on here and connect with you guys and um, actually do a, a live in person interaction. But I cannot figure out how to do that. So anyway. Anybody else, something that God has gotten a hold of your heart with or a passage that he has challenged and encouraged you with this week? And if not, it's okay. Um, I, I just want to encourage you to be thinking about that and writing those things down. I mean, it, it, or, or at least re reflecting on them with somebody else. Some of the, the, the greatest stuff that we can do in this is to share with one another what God's doing in our hearts. Um, I, I, that's why I believe that everybody should try and teach whatever they are learning. Find somebody to share it with. Because when we start to articulate and share what it is that we are seeing in Scripture, it really causes us to wrestle with and to think through what it is we believe. What does it mean? What do, what do we actually... Um, what do we see in the text? How do we apply this? What does it mean to us? So I really want to encourage you to do that. Find someone you can share the text with. Somebody that you can, that you can actually share what you're learning um, as you're in the Word of God this next week. So well, I'm excited. Uh, I, I'm excited to see what God's doing in your lives. I can't wait to get back together and to join you all um, as we celebrate um, together in fellowship. And, and um, I'm sure that the first potluck we have is, is just going to be phenomenal. Maybe, maybe we'll have to do it outside. Um, but I'm super excited to gather and to celebrate with you what God's doing. Look forward to seeing you soon. Um, and... Uh, I am going to um, well, I'm, I'm going, going to say goodbye to you today because um, it looks like um, we are. I haven't got any more scripture, and um, I've actually shared with you two of the passages that I had on my heart today. And so, rather than belaboring this, I'm going to wish you guys a great day and ask that God would bless each and every one of you um, with the the work of the Spirit as you are reading His Word, as you are engaging the Word of God, that He would open your eyes, open our ears, that, that you and I would see what He is teaching us um, and that it would impact our hearts so deeply that it would change who we are. Um, not just what we say we believe, but, but how we live and how we love other people. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. Pursue the Lord today. Seek Him first and His kingdom and allow him to provide the things that you need, both in his word and in your emotional and spiritual needs as well. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day.